times, many ways. Merry Christmas to you. It's December, meaning, guess what's back? My festive film series. I bet you're so excited. I know I am. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel if you, you're a regular viewer, but if you're not, my name is Robin. I make videos sometimes. <laughs> every, well, every December since last December, I've created a series called the Festive Film Series. And for the first episode of 2019, I will be reviewing A Christmas Prince, The Royal Baby. You may recognize me if you watched my last year's review on A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding, which got an excellent reception, so thank you if you watched it. Especially those involved with the film, like Rose McIver and Sarah Douglas. They watched the review and they loved it, so thanks lads. <laughs> I hope you like this one too. And I can tell you now, I really like the film. So let's just get into it. I was really surprised when they actually announced the third film. Obviously, it was a big shock for everyone. Well, for me it was. I don't know if people were expecting the third film, but Rose McIver, who played Amber, or plays Amber, I should say, released a photo on Instagram of like Queen Amber's ultrasound, and I was like, oh my god, Christmas is gonna be amazing this year. And I've been waiting for it, and it was released yesterday, December 5th, as of recording this, and I did watch it last night, and I was actually very pleasantly surprised. For some reason, trilogies don't always work. You get to like, you release the initial film, it's fantastic, it gets reception, people want a sequel, and it gets a sequel, that's just as good. But some filmmakers, I feel like they release a third film just because they feel like they should, and it doesn't do well. With some exceptions, obviously, like Back to the Future or Star Wars and Fast and Furious with its many films in the franchise, but I feel like Netflix releasing A Christmas Prince 3, it really, really worked. If you've seen the film, you know what the gist is, you know what happens. Richard and Amber are having a baby! Woohoo! There's gonna be a princess or prince, we don't know. Spoiler alert, it's a princess. <sighs> and I had a feeling it was gonna be a girl, and I I actually I wrote notes and I I was writing notes as I was watching the film, and I said the baby is gonna be named Rudy or after her mother. And it was after her mum, which I thought was really, really sweet, because obviously Amber's mum, uh, she's uh, unfortunately not with the family anymore. She died, which is very sad, but I really love the fact that they honoured her with Ellery. I think that's such a nice name as well. So, love that. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> obviously, the film is around Christmas time in Aldovia. No one does Christmas like the Aldovians do. And... I put here, Simon is part of the family, like the last two films never happened. <laughs> um, you do get some cheeky comments from Emily, Princess Emily. One of the things she says is, not nearly as unsettling as your continued presence. <laughs> and then I put, I mean, we were all thinking it. <laughs> when I saw Simon, who's now with Melissa, which, which shocked me, but obviously in the ending of the second film, they kind of were talking and stuff. I was like, oh, he's still here. I do like Simon with his awkward British kind of humour, because that's kind of what I like. And I'm kind of glad that he's in it and part of the family again. Obviously, with the whole setting of the film, there is the treaty agreement between Aldovia and Penglia, and for some, I don't know why, but in the trailer, I thought the whole thing with Pengler was really forced because it hadn't been mentioned at all in the film before it. But it works, it really does work. Obviously, it works. But I feel like when I watched the trailer and was reading up about it, 
I was like, me, I think they've just done this just to have something like in the film to give it substance, but it does actually really work. So Aldovia and Penglia have this treaty agreement that happened in 1419 and every 100 years it's re-signed by the leaders of the countries or the kingdoms I should say and Queen Amber and King Richard have this thing to modernise Aldovia so Queen Amber's like hey I may be pregnant but that doesn't mean I can't still be a queen and I want to sign that treaty I don't think it should just be the kings who sign it because that's just a bit sexist you know what I mean? <laughs> Obviously she doesn't say it like that, that's just me, you know, summing it up a bit. But Queen Ming of Penglia is always a bit traditional and you do get that when you meet her. I think she's portrayed to be kind of like cold towards Queen Amber and not really in favour of doing anything against tradition. But her husband, King Tai, is like, you do a lot for the kingdom, I think you should sign it because you do just as much as I do and you deserve the representation as well. And as you go on with the film, Queen Amber and Queen Ming, they do come closer together. And of course, Queen Ming helps Queen Amber with her, uh, with her labor and her giving birth because she is due January 11th in the film, but she goes into labor a month early. Well, not a month early, a few weeks early. But Queen Ming, she says that she's worked in maternity during her reign as a queen so she is very experienced in that department and the the doctor that que uh, that Amber and Richard have is stuck in a snowstorm which King Richard obviously goes and saves her on a horse which is fantastic <laughs> and I really like the fact that they came together because I feel like I had a feeling like, oh, they're not going to like each other, but in the true spirit of Christmas and family and love and coming together, they did, and that made me very happy. But obviously, that's not the main point of the film. The main point of the film, this treaty goes missing. Dun, dun, dun. I, when I was watching the film, like I said, taking notes, I wrote... Is it going to be a who done it kind of thing? And obviously a who done it is kind of like a murder mystery kind of thing, like trying to figure out who committed the murder. But obviously there's no murder in this film. It's who done it as in who took the treaty. And the obvious suspects are Simon and Queen Ming and King Tai's attaché, Lin. Because that you find out that they, Lin and Simon, know each other from Oxford. Melissa's really jealous and a bit like skeptical because she thinks that there's something more going on you find that there isn't because Simon proposes to Melissa and I was like oh that's so cute so definitely gonna be a fourth film right <laughs> I had my suspicions oh it's definitely gonna be Simon it's definitely gonna be Lynn because I had a feeling oh Lynn maybe might not like the position she's in and she might not like the whole royalty thing so she wants to overthrow that by s uh, sabotaging the treaty but obviously you find out no <laughs> It was Mr. Little all along, and when you watch the film back, like you think, oh, it's it's definitely him because obviously he t he tells Queen Emily, oh, there's ghosts in the dungeon, don't go down there. But Emily is adamant to find the treaty because she finds out that there is a curse attached to it, which is to curse the firstborn, which would be Queen Amber and King Richard's baby, and she's like. I don't want to have a curse on the baby. So everyone goes their ways to go and find it and obviously they do, which is good. In my last review, I mentioned how I loved the relationship that Sahil and Andy had and I did say that. I, I put a tweet out on Twitter, which I'll put here, that I would like a spin-off with Andy and Sahil. The guy who plays Andy, Joel, he quote tweeted it here and said that he shipped it. So I was like, oh my god, we're gonna have our own spin off. The third film comes, we don't have a spin off, do we? We don't have them uh, in a relationship per se, but we do have them coming together in a business partnership for design, SNA International. And I was so happy. 
I thought they actually weren't going to be in this film, and then obviously they're they're in the trailer, but I thought that just their scene was just a one-off. But they're in it, and I'm so happy. I love them both so much. <laughs> I was so happy to see that Emily and Tom had come together, and they're like a really cute wee couple now. Oh, they were so cute. I love them together. <laughs> Because obviously in the last film they were doing that, they were doing that wee play together, and they had a wee kiss scene and that, and everyone was like, "Oh, that's so cute!" And for them to come together, oh, thank you, <laughs> my wee heart. <laughs> I couldn't take it, but I'm very glad that it happened. So the treaty with its uh, alleged curse, if it's not signed by midnight, then obviously the baby's cursed. Um, they find it just before midnight and the penguins are about to leave but then they're like no cancel the flight and Queen Ming's like I need to go help Amber with her baby and the baby's born just after midnight on Christmas Day and the treaty is signed and the kingdoms are not at war which is good everything comes to a happy ending and throughout the film Rudy, who's Amber's dad, is trying to get to Altuvia, but with the snow, all the flights are cancelled and no one can get in or get out of the kingdom. But he eventually makes it just after Queen Amber has her baby girl. And it's so cute. He walks in like, girl, did I just find out that I'm having a granddaughter? <laughs> oh, I love it. And I'm glad they never changed the actor again for her, the dad, because they did in the second film. The first films, the first film, the guy who played the dad is very, very different from the guy who played the dad in the second film. So I'm glad they they stuck with that second guy because did you think we wouldn't notice you changing the dad? I'm just glad because I, I thought that was kind of like a running thing. It's like we'll have a different actor for the dad every single time. <laughs> However, some points I didn't like or well I didn't not like but there are some continuation errors um, I don't know if I, obviously this wasn't spotted because it's in the film um, after they find out that the treaty is missing Amber and Richard tell Emily and Simon to entertain the penguins and they take them into a room to play a board game which is called top the tree which I put as just Monopoly with extra steps. <laughs> and then I put, they've all just changed outfits for some reason. And they had, because in the previous scene, Melissa was wearing a very nice blue dress, but in the next scene, she was wearing a completely different blue dress. And then I noticed Emily's not wearing that purple thing. She's now wearing a red cardigan kind of thing. And I don't know why, Maybe, ugh. all I can think of, if that was intentional, they all changed outfits because they were no longer witnessing the signing of the treaty. And they thought, oh, we don't actually have to dress up anymore. But then, I, if that was the case, then fair enough. But it was also a very bad continuation error because people don't suddenly change outfits after like 10 minutes, do they? Especially in a situation like a palace. But if I'm wrong, then I apologize, but you know. Make sure you don't have any continuation errors in your films. So it's a happy ending. They have a baby, they call it Ellery. Rudy's here. Queen Ming gives Queen Amber her necklace about motherhood and everyone's happy. And I give it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> I really did love this film and the only thing that I had anything wrong with was that wee small continuation error which in the whole film in general is totally insignificant. It didn't ruin my experience or love for the film and I love that all the actors and everyone involved in the film really still are passionate about this series and I don't know if this will be the last film. If there's going to be a fourth film then go for it. But if not, and if this is the end, then I loved it. And I will definitely be re-watching it every Christmas. And maybe even 
in the middle of summer just because <laughs> I love Queen Amber and I love all of them. Apart from Mr. Little, because he sabotaged everything with the treaty. We don't like him. <laughs> but that's my review. I absolutely loved it. Would recommend you watching it, but obviously if you've come this far in the review, you've probably seen it. So just watch it again. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. So watch this space.